It's time for a showdown. Fight for blood. <laughs> Xperia 1 Mark 4 versus Xperia 1 Mark 5. Two phones that seem very similar on paper, but a number of small upgrades and improvements contribute to an overall satisfying update. The 1 Mark 4 has been duking it out with my Moto Edge 2022 for keeping my SIM card the longest out of all the North American phones launched last year. I've been bouncing around quite a bit between the 1 Mark 4, the Moto, and the Pixel 7 Pro. Getting to play with this Mark 5 prototype immediately Sony fans are in for a treat on performance and power management. The Mark IV changed my behavior. Using this phone, I knew I could get tons of great video out in the field. I could shoot some insanely good looking 4K slow motion, but I had to manage the phone more because of how thirsty the Samsung produced Snapdragon chip was. Shooting in shorter bursts, and if I knew I was going to use the camera heavy, also leaning on airplane mode, just to take some of the load off. Some phone manufacturers handle this more gracefully than others, but the common thread for all our high performance woes last year was Samsung. This year we get a better chip made by TSMC, and while it can still get warm and eat up a ton of battery when you tell it to, it's a much more consistent performer. Sony has also used better internal components to help manage heat, so we get a performance double whammy. It'll get warm to the touch, and if you hit the phone hard with maximum screen brightness, 5G radio, and you're shooting 4K at a blistering 120 frames per second in warm summer heat, I bet you can get it to give you a thermal warning. But isolating just for the camera use in airplane mode in my relatively cool office, with the screen set to medium brightness, the Mark IV gave me a thermal warning shooting 4K 120 at nine minutes and then tapped out at 16 minutes, ending the clip. The Mark V ran for 30 minutes with no thermal warnings. It just kept going. I think we can call that progress. Every heavy lifting compute task has improved with the phone running more consistently in longer sustained use. And the other major upgrade is the new main camera sensor and it's a brand new sensor technology. The Exmor T-Series makes its debut in this phone, boasting significantly better signal processing and a two-stop light advantage. We get a twofer over the Mark IV, a bigger sensor, and better light technology. We also get that shallower depth of field, brighter images with less noise, and we can still crank up 4K 120 for video with Skynet spooky good eye tracking autofocus. I'll be doing a more in-depth camera review on the Patreon, patreon.com slash some gadget guy, but this is a significant step for Sony and catches this phone up in the trend of using larger sensors on other phones. And those are probably the big differences, but there are numerous smaller tweaks to the cameras too. The apps are still divided by photo or video shooting, but now they're both orientation aware, and they have an on-screen shutter button in portrait mode for Photo Pro. With extra processing power on tap, we get a new two-stage software stabilization. The Mark IV tapped out with EIS only available on 4K 30. Now the Mark V does EIS at 4K 60 and includes a higher quality stabilization for 4K 30. The Mark V brings a new night mode processing option. And I've heard people, they keep saying that Sony's don't have night modes, but they clearly do when shooting auto. It takes a longer scan of the scene and you get a cleaner image. But for the Mark V, this has been juiced up quite a bit. The new sensor is already soaking up more light and the processing digs in even more with that finished low noise HDR effect. It's still a Sony, so it's not attempting the same night and today effect that Vivo is currently doing the best, but it's a noticeable step up from the Mark IV and it fits into the overall Sony camera aesthetic really well. It still looks like a photo from an Xperia. And one of the most critical for me, after years, years of begging for this, Sony finally added full-time focus peaking to their camera apps. During the brief that I had, I had a video call with Sony PR. They actually referenced how I'd been whining about this since the original Xperia 1 Mark 1, and I finally have it and it's awesome. I love it. It took a long time to get here, but it's even more important that we get it now with the step up in sensor size, as the shallower depth of field makes focus lock even more critical. It's a fantastic set of updates for this camera system, making the phone feel a bit more sure-footed, catching up some of the fun features that we like on other phones, but holding on to that Sony feel, which is 
wholly unique. No other phone shoots like a Sony. I'll be digging into a few other phone camera comparisons and it's not an easy fight. Where I really like the look of some other larger, also made by Sony, sensors out there, I trust in Xperia for sports, action, and high-speed video in situations I might not even try to shoot with other phones. Gonna be a few other brutal camera comparison videos out there. And we also see similar improvements for the external monitor mode too. Now, the Mark IV can make for a really handy external display. You plug it into a camera and you get a larger viewfinder to work from. Sony built in live streaming capabilities, and that means you can use your phone as a modem for your camera to directly host a stream. It minimizes your gear. The Mark V takes this farther with better visualizations on the screen and can also record directly in this mode. Now, it's not going to replace an Atomos in record quality or capabilities, but it's also a phone and a modem. So depending on your needs working out in the field, you might be able to leave a lot of extra gear at home and streamline your recording or your streaming setup. Sony is the only manufacturer that in adding these new features and updating these features has not gutted the legacy hardware that still contributes to the overall phone experience. Sony gave us a bigger battery, kept the jack, and has made the height of the phone a tiny fraction smaller than we saw on the Xperia 1 Mark II. The main aesthetic differences between the Mark IV and the Mark V, the Mark V has a dimpled rear glass panel and ridged sides, all to improve the grip and the handling of the phone, especially when you're trying to use it like a camera. The only downgrade between these two the Mark IV launched with 512 gig of built-in storage as the only option. The Mark V is launching with 256 gig of storage, but the whole phone is starting at a lower price than the Mark IV, and I really need that to sink in. No other manufacturer has cut the MSRP launch price of their phone this much and kept all the legacy features and improved core technologies like the main camera and improved thermal performance. So, <laughs> wrapping all this up, bringing this plane in for a landing, Xperia 1 Mark IV to Xperia 1 Mark V, it's not a radically different experience. It's consistently Sony. I always find the year-over-year -year conversations the most difficult. My highest praise is saying a phone has improved so much that it's worthy of a one-year upgrade over its predecessor, and I don't make that proclamation often. I don't know that I can broadly make that recommendation, but I'm pretty close. Now, I've learned how to handle the high-performance phones from last year, but they all need more babysitting and user involvement because of how poorly Samsung made those chips. Software, updates, patches, Android 13, these have all helped the 8 Gen 1 performance, it's made it better, but we can't completely escape the issues of that chip. For these two phones specifically, if you've learned how to handle the Mark IV, worked it into your lifestyle, and it hasn't cramped your style, you might not directly feel the improvements switching to the Mark V. If you shoot on the Mark V like you do on the Mark IV, then that's gonna be about the same. But if you're regularly running into the limits of the Mark IV, then the Mark V will be a breath of fresh air, and it's gonna give you a lot more room to play. When you add that to a few of the other practical improvements, it might be enough to tip someone over into flipping a phone one generation newer. I still really like my Mark IV, but it's exciting to see Sony launch a whole new camera technology here. It's really fun getting to see what Sony can do with the better parts from TSMC. I think it's worth a little personal perspective. My preferences and my journey with Sony phones, I held on to my Xperia 1 Mark II instead of switching over to the Mark III. I still have it today. This phone has been a champ. But for how much I've enjoyed using the Mark IV, when the Mark V comes to North America, I'll probably swap over. It's probably gonna happen. I'm just having so much fun with the camera phones again this year. And don't be shy down in the comments. You know, I'm gonna be putting out uh, new performance charts and benchmarks. We're gonna be looking at a lot more camera samples. And if you have questions, drop them below and hit that bell icon on your way down. Would you switch over from a 1 Mark III or a 1 Mark IV to a 1 Mark V? Have the updates and improvements here got you considering a switch to Sony if you were on another manufacturer's phones? Let's have a fun chat down in the comments because it's these types of products that help the tech landscape feel a bit fresh. This is what helps us keep tech from feeling boring. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, subscribing to the channel. All of the support lately has been rocking my socks. Y'all have been amazing. Those of you clicking on links or if you're hitting my home site, somegadgetguy.com, shopping a little merch, 
or if you're joining the list of names scrolling by on your screen from my Patreon, patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. This list is basically the coolest collection of tech pals in the universe, and they get exclusive access to my camera deep dives and my early photo samples, so I hope you'll check them out. They're really good people. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet. I'm at some gadget guy across the web. I host my podcast on the Twitch. I'm spending a lot more time on the Mastodons, sharing photos on the Flickers, a little less so these days on the Twitters and the Facebooks and the Instagrams. And I will catch you all on the next video.